A very pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon to you on this beautiful Wednesday, right? Beautiful Wednesday. It's just so great to be here. This is a project that we have been working on for well over 10 years. And to see this come to this point is just such, such a blessing and so much encouragement that we're very, very excited about this day. We just want to welcome each and every one of you. We're so thankful that you're here and grateful. And um, the first thing we want to do here is um, I want to um, ask Major Rebecca Mott to come up and do our invocation. Thank you, Major Mott. We also have another Major Mott, and that is Major Ronald Mott. And of course, they're a team, and uh, they were brought here really to bring this building together. And they've been here two years, is that right? Two almost. years? Two, almost two years, okay. And we want to ask uh, Major Ronald Mott to come up and give us the history on this project. Major? Salvation Army started in Beckley in 1925 in a building located on 3rd Street, which is now long gone. In 1934, the Salvation Army started to build the current building that we're in now on 312 South Fayette Street. This is a newspaper clipping from 1934 that we had uh, at our current building. We've been in this building for 84 years. And it's time for Beckley and the Salvation Army to move on. In 2014, the old John I building sit right here. And it sat there until 2020. We demolished it. I then met with Adam of CM, CMM Architects. And they had been working on this project since 2014. They were going to remodel the building that was here. But once we got to looking at the building, it was too far gone. Um, the copper in the building, every piece of copper was stolen out of it. The windows kept getting broke and uh, so we decided to tear that down and we moved on to a new design with ZMM Architects. We have ZMM Architects with us. Billy Sims, you want to raise your hand? Uh, they've been working with me very closely, and we uh, come up with a design, and it was approved all the way to divisional headquarters, to territorial headquarters, and all the way back. The first foundation to get on board with this project was the Carter Foundation. They believed in us enough that they gave us $200,000 to start this foundation. And that was greatly appreciated. Others committed to the cause, which Colonel Hoffer will thank in just a few moments. And then State Senator Roland Roberts took on our cause to the governor, Governor Justice, about monies from the CARES Act. On December 23rd, the governor's office contacted me 
and stated, Merry Christmas. And I said, Merry Christmas. And then he said, uh, the governor is going to be giving you $6 million towards your project for the clear back. So he gave the six million dollars to the Salvation Army of Beckley. So here we are today, in the, uh, the midst of rain, but God is looking down at us and He's smiling, and He will see this through. It's a dream come true. Now I'd like to recognize my advisory board members. This is Dorothy Earhart, Mr. Michael Ferris, Mr. Charles Hope, Mrs. Carolyn Lucas, Mrs. Jill Moorfield, Mr. Jay Quasenberry, Mr. Jim Sheetsley, Mr. George Wilson, Mrs. Leslie Baker, Mr. Gavin Ward, Mr. Don McCleskey, Mr. Kevin Rasmussen, Mrs. Julie Mullahan, Mr. George Wood, and Mr. Al Martin. And we just recently lost Mrs. Betty Wilson. She's been a member of our advising board for years, and it's been the last 10 years she has not been able to attend. Also, Tom Sofer is our newest advisory board member. Uh, so welcome all you advisory board members. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the Salvation Army in your community. As we move ahead, we look forward to this beautiful building. Governor Jim Justice, I'm glad you're here. Senator Roland Roberts, Mayor Ron Grample, esteemed guests, board members, and friends of the Salvation Army. I greet you and welcome you to the Beckley Miracle. I am the Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army Potomac Division, which includes Virginia, the District of Columbia, Maryland, and West Virginia. When I arrived last June to take over this assignment, I was presented with various projects across this division. They mentioned to me that Beckley would be a challenge, if not impossible. For the belief was at that time that there was no way that people could raise more than $100,000 in Beckley. By my third week in office, I received a call from Major Ron Mott that the first donation had come in and it was of $200,000. And other pledges were being made, so clearly there was a mistaken view of what could happen in Beckley. Lo and behold, the miracle would continue to grow exponentially over the next month. In Washington, we refer to Beckley as the miracle project, the miracle. The impossible was clearly becoming the possible and it went on to become a reality. Christopher Reeve once said, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then when we summon the will, they soon become inevitable. The reality is that you, Major Ron and Rebecca Mott, together with your board members and city leaders, believe that this soon would be inevitable. Because when God opens doors, no one can shut them. And here we are about to break ground so that very soon the Salvation Army Corps and Community Center, a center 
of hope, a center of comfort, a center of belonging, a center of salvation and transformation will become a safe place, a place of belonging and care for many in this community. And therefore, it gives me great joy to acknowledge today some of our key donors. The Carter Foundation, 200,000, you were the first ones. The City of Berkeley, Mayor Rappold, $75,000. I remember the day when Major Mott called me, all excited that this gift could become a reality. Thank you. County of Rally, Commissioner Dave Tolliver, 15,000. The Vitellio Family Foundation, 10,000. The Vic Carroll Memorial Fund, 1,500. And a $2 million anonymous donor, whoever you are, I hope you're listening. Thank you. Thank you and thank you again. And lastly, but not least, Governor Jim Justice. And together with the intervention of Senator Roland uh, Rappel, uh, sorry, uh, from the Senator, $6 million from the state. Governor, I may or may not have shed some tears when I watch your presentation on TV. My wife and I completed this last week a tour of Parkersburg, Wheeling and Weirton, where we saw officers and employees working hard, serving the poorest and most needed in these West Virginian communities. We also have been to Morgantown and Charleston and Huntington and have seen the very same level of commitment. Governor Justice and Mayor, you have my word, and Senators, the Salvation Army is committed to West Virginia, and we pledge to continue to serve the population of this great state as we have been doing for over 100 years. We continue to serve suffering humanity wherever they may be found. We do it in the name of Jesus. We do it because the Lord has commanded us to do so and that he has raised the Salvation Army for this very purpose. Right here in Beckley, many will come in this hallowed place right here and find refuge in these premises and hopefully find hope, faith, and a renewed sense of purpose again. Thank you again for your extraordinary generosity. I would also like to thank Major Smart and the advisory board members for ensuring that we get to this point Tammy Shank and of course Vic Carroll who is no longer with us and, the, and other members of development. The Lord is rewarding your efforts. May God continue to bless you, Governor Justice, and your leadership of this state. May God bless all those who will work and minister on this site and may God, God bless the great state of West Virginia. Thank you. That was Lieutenant Colonel Alan Hoffer, who is the Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army Potomac Division. Next up, we'd like to welcome the Honorable Mayor of the great city of Beckley, West Virginia, Rob Rapholm. Army in the city of Beckley has been a constant, reliable thread in the fabric that makes Beckley the great city it is. And for that we are so thankful. I'm so thankful and proud uh, and I'm always glad to receive the recognition for the city's contribution, but that came from our common council members, all seven of them. We the city who, uh, made that nice contribution. We have several members uh, here today. Uh, we have uh, Janine Bully from Ward 5. I saw Tom Sofer. I saw uh, Jill from uh, Events. Uh, also on the advisory board. Uh, certainly uh, the lady in red, Leslie Baker. Uh, <laughs> Gavin Ward, John Peplowski, all members of the city of Beckley's 
So, with that, it's a wonderful day. It's wonderful from the city of Beckley and I offer my heartiest congratulations and thank you for the honor of being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Rappold. Next up, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce the president of the Raleigh County Commissioner, Dave Tolliver. And as you know, I work for the Raleigh County Commissioner. He's also my boss, but it's a real pleasure to be able to introduce to you Commission President Dave Tolliver. Dave? Thank you, Jay. Also, I want to recognize we have uh, Commissioner Greg Duckworth with us here today, and Commissioner Epley could not be here. Let me tell you just one little short story. I know it's told. Several years ago, I worked for Beckley Fire Department. We had a fire down here uh, in Beckley, and uh, it was a pretty severe fire, and there was a man and woman and two kids. They come up to me and said, look, we don't have no place to go. You're talking about midnight. And so we got on the phone and we called Salvation Army. It's the first time I've ever had any dealings with them. And the gentleman we talked to, he said, absolutely. You take them to a motel. We'll take care of them. Call to the motel room, food, whatever. Since that time while I was with fire department, we've done that several times. So all of us can thank Salvation Army for what they do and what they still do. Uh, it's a great organization. First, on behalf of all the crews in Raleigh County, Governor, I want to thank you for the $6 million that you get for this project here. Of course, it don't only affect Raleigh County, of course, it affects Summers, uh, Wyoming County, Mercer County, Boone County, and so forth. So, on behalf of the citizens of Raleigh County, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Next up we have, from Senator Manchin's office, Ben Spurlock. We've been seeing a lot of Ben around this community. It's really good to have him. He's got some remarks from Senator Manchin. provide me with some brief remarks to share on his behalf. On behalf of the citizens of Mountain State and as your United States Senator, it is my distinct honor to join you in celebrating the long awaited groundbreaking of the Salvation Army Corps and Community Center in beautiful Beckley, West Virginia. Developments like this are the backbone for our great state. Every person involved with these programs and services is representing the very best of who we are as a statewide community. And I am grateful every single day for your support of these programs and for the outstanding impact of the Salvation Army. This community center will benefit the local neighborhood in countless ways for many years to come, and I am honored to lend my voice and support for this valuable addition to the region. I truly appreciate the generous contributions from Governor Justice, the Carter Foundation, the Cilio Family Foundation, the City of Beckley, and the Raleigh County Commission as well as other donors and community members who have selflessly given their time, money, and energy to make today a reality. Keep up the terrific work, because you are making our state an even better place to live, work, and raise a family one project at a time. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great state of West Virginia. With warmest regards, Joe Manchin. Now we're getting to the good part. We have the presentation of the contract from Major Mott and also Kevin Radford from Radford and Radford and Radford and Radford Construction won the bid for this facility. Well, as you know, this can't be done without a general contractor. We put out bids and ran. 
Radford and Radford was awarded the bid to do this project for us. And on behalf of the Salvation Army, I'd like to give you the official contract to be able to do this building. And we look forward to all of your efforts in this project. Thank you. Next up is a special presentation by Albert DeSaris, who's the Divisional Director of Development, and Lieutenant Colonel Alan Hoffer, who's the Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army Potomac Division. Salvation Army for a number of years, but last year, about a year and a half ago, we restructured our teams, and we came together as one Potomac Division, and at that time, I had the pleasure and honor to work with a man named Vic Carroll, and there's so many contributors here today and so many key members who are making this a reality, but sadly, Vic is not here today with us, and he is such a a, a, a key member and such a contributor. This was Vic's dream and hope. But just if I can say a few words, I was so excited to have Vic on my team and to be working with Vic because Vic had the reputation of being an unbelievable fundraiser and selfishly I was excited to have him to help increase our numbers. In the year we were together, I learned that Vic is a, was a truly special man. He became a friend to his teammates a mentor to his teammates and truly he became a role model for the development department sadly as I mentioned Vic passed away last spring and as we went through and had to close out our books and finish out our year I went through Vic's numbers his fundraising numbers and true to form even though Vic didn't work the entire fiscal year Vic hit his mark as he always did, and it put such a smile on my face because I knew that Vic was always the role model, always working hard, always working tirelessly, truly because he loved the Salvation Army, and truly because he wanted to make a difference for the people of West Virginia. So just recently we had at our territorial conference an award ceremony, and we give awards to certain key staff members who have done considerable work in the course of the year and often we look at a number of years together. I didn't know this was happening at the awards ceremony and quite frankly it brought me to tears. The Southern Territory of the Salvation Army honored Vic with a lifetime contribution award. And if I could, I'd just like to read what it says on the award. In honor of significant contributions made through your work, leadership, and mentoring of others within the resource development program. So for me and for our team, and I think I can speak for the entire Salvation Army, this is a award that is well deserved. I only wish Vic were here to see it today. But Carol, I would love to present this to you and let you know not only what Vic meant to our team, but the entire Salvation Army. And I know this project was near and dear to his heart. It was a dream of his. And I thank everyone here who's contributed to make this a reality, not only for the city of Beckley, but for Vic Carroll. Carol, as you come, I've heard a lot about Vic, and we're here because of him today, because of his great influence. Just come here to me. So we want to present this award, also in remembrance of Victor and how Vic, what he's done, his achievement, 
and we want to just share a prayer over you for the Lord to continue to come to you. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We do thank you for this. We thank you for his faith. We thank you for his belief in West Virginia. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which, in which he helped our mission. And Lord, we no longer have the blessing of Vic with us here. You have him there. And Lord, we just bring, bring again Carol before you. Continue to comfort and guide and strengthen this family and overwhelm her with a sense of peace. But we do say thank you to you, Lord, for Vic's life and for his influence on so many people in so many places. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Next up, we want to welcome Senator Roland Roberts, who was so instrumental in getting the funding for this. If you can come up and give us just a few words. Senator, it's great to have you. By the way, he left session to get down here, and he's got to go back after this is done. Thank you very much. Let's talk about reality. The reality is it's a terrible day today with the weather. But the reality as far as people's living conditions and the problems that we have here in the Beckley area, they're miserable too. There are a lot of people that are hurting. Salvation, the word salvation in the Bible means deliverance. I have great expectations that what is going to happen in this place is going to be to bring deliverance to people, to help people who are consider themselves helpless right now to give hope to those people who are hopeless and to give a hand up to those people who don't know what to do and to whom to turn i cannot think of any other better positioned organization than the salvation army to be able to address the needs that are presented right here in our community I cannot tell you how proud I am of those people that are on the board, those people that have paid the price for all of these years, those people that have had a heart for the community, for the, for the city council and the mayor, for the Raleigh County Commission, for the people that have given. I'm humbled to be able to be a little part of that. And I want you to know that we will back any organization that is trying to help people. Now I want you to know that your governor has been working hard. He's been very successful in arranging the team together. We legislators are cooperating with him. West Virginia is winning in so many ways. Our, our economy is surging we are having growth on every in every sector and i am especially proud that when i asked the governor about the two million dollars he wrote it down on his pad and i knew he was on board and i thank you for that but i want you to know that governor james justice james c justice went over and beyond that $2 million need and was able to secure $4 million more million for a total of $6 million. That's going to help. Yes, give him my hand. Seven counties right here in the southern part of the state are going to reap the reward. And our governor was on board with that. And I hope that you'll be very receptive in, in welcoming him in just a moment. Let me say one other thing. We need to bind together as a community. Our state is doing well, but many of our people are hurting. And that's very important for us to stay together and tighten it as a community because there's more to be done. This is just the beginning. 
of more great things happening in West Virginia. And ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming the great governor of the great state of West Virginia, James Justice, as he comes. promised everybody that I'd bring baby dog. <laughs> Incredible day, is it not? I mean, that's all there is to it. And, uh, you know, I say this over and over, you know, and and, it's, and I don't know how I got into this, but, but this little thing was just placed in Kathy and my lap by our son and daughter on Christmas two years ago. And <clears throat> with all of that, our grandson, who was two years old at the time, kept walking around watching her walk around and say, where did that baby dog go? And he was two. So we named her baby dog. Now since that time, we've all been through a couple of really tough years. There's no question about that. And literally, I truly believe that God above gave us the ability to smile and to laugh. And this journey is really tough. And that's all there is to it. And I truly believe he wants it that way to just test our metal in many ways. But if that face doesn't make you smile, there's something wrong with you. And the other thing is she loves everybody. Everybody. Well, it's just that simple, really, when it really boils right down to it. If we could all just do that, if we could make one another smile, and we could know that we're going to love everyone, irregardless of race, or whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent, rich, poor, no matter what it may be, we're going to love everyone. You know what we'd be if we did that? We'd be the Salvation Army. We really would. And I don't have any notes. And to God above, that just came to me just then. <laughs> now. So, baby doll, today, your ways, to me, are the Salvation Army's ways. Now, all of us know, through all time, we see them ringing a bell, Christmas time. We don't know of all the great things that they do, but I do know. And I do know that when this project started to become a reality and everything, that, you know, our great senator, lots of different people, you know, asked me to try to get involved and do what I could do. I'm not gonna sit here and toot my horn in any way. Because I don't want to do that. I want to toot your horn, all of your horns. All the great people in this great community and all these seven counties that are going to come right here. This needed to be what that ring of the bell gives us. It gives us hope, does it not? And really and truly, at the end of the day, it stands for hope. And this absolutely should be the beacon of hope. That's what it should be. And so from that standpoint, now we're on our way. And let's go do it in the greatest way of all. A food pantry, a gymnasium, walking track, my gosh, a 
you know, commercial kitchen, over and over, chapel, the fellowship hall, all the different things. Isn't it an incredible day in Beckley, West Virginia? Isn't it an incredible day in Southern West Virginia? Absolutely, without any doubt, I thank all of you. And Baby Dog thanks all of you. And I can tell you from the very bottom of my heart just this. A long ways away from, from where we are today, and I know it's a little cold and you've listened to a bunch of people, and I've sat in the car with Baby Dog. <laughs> and Baby Dog's wondering, when are we going to go get the chicken nuggets? <laughs> but she's on the same dietary program that I'm on. And that <laughs> So, but nevertheless, uh, a long ways away from here, there's a whole world of people that would give any and everything they could, they could possibly give to be us. Just think of what's going on in Ukraine right this moment. Now, in all honesty, our prayers need to be in a lot of different directions. But our prayers need to be for those great people right now. So, I won't keep you longer. I know it's cold, and I know it's wet, and I know I've said it many times at the Little League of all places. But I said, you know, really and truly, on the opening day, at least sometimes, the bleachers would be really hard and the sun would be bearing right down. And I would turn to the parents and say, there'll be a day soon that you'll give anything in the world for this day. And really and truly, that's how we should feel right now. This day, this day is so meaningful to all of those that will be served and be helped in every single way. So God bless all of you in every way. And I can never, ever thank you enough. You've pulled the rope, and we've run across the finish line together. That's good stuff to me. Thank you all for having me. Governor Justice, I want to present you with a souvenir of this occasion. Gold or gold shovel. <laughs> says Salvation Army on it. It's got the data. On the hand. So, uh, we thank you so much for coming out and supporting us so much. All right, friends, we're going to just say a final breath. Governor, thank you again for being here. And just before you, because you mentioned Ukraine, I want to let you know that Salvation Army officers, Ukrainian officers, refused to leave the country to stay behind with their people and help them in their time of need. Would you please stand for me? Almighty God, we come before you this day, a rainy and cold day, but you are here. You love this community. You died for this community. You rose again for this community. And Lord, we thank you for all the doors that you open and the hearts you've touched. And Lord, now as we are about to break this ground symbolically, as we begin the construction work, we pray, Lord, that thousands of people over the years will come to find a place of refuge in this location, will find help, will find salvation, will find restoration. Lord, we commit this great work again into your hands and we dedicate it to your glory and to your honor. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless this beautiful state of West Virginia and all its leaders. Amen.